Guys, welcome back to another video with Derek Okahashi and Core Team Hawaii on moving to Hawaii. Uh, today we're going to do Kalihi. So this is a part of our Honolulu series. Kalihi is not one of the neighborhoods when you say Honolulu that you usually think of. In Kalihi Valley here, this is, this is a valley where the Rike Rike Highway goes. So when we do all these windward side videos and we talk about how there's like five ways to get to the east side, this is one of them, right? So this is one of the arteries from Honolulu to the east side. And it goes through this valley. You can, you can hear the road noise, huh? All of that wind that comes over the mountains, it funnels through this valley. Kalihi goes all the way. I guess you would consider Nimitz. Nimitz is still like Kalihi, but- I consider it, yeah. It's Kalihi. So it goes really all the way from the ocean up to this valley. You can see the beauty behind me. And then the houses, there's a range. So this house here seems to have a bunch of upgrades and says you're on camera, there's security. The houses have a range. It, it varies. This Kalihi Valley, there, the homes are older. A lot of times you'll see tin roofs too. Like we were showing a home, we'll probably actually go there after this. We're showing a home on that side of Kalihi Valley. Kind of had a nice view, but then there were like a, a few roofs down in front of the home that were like rusted tin roofs that kind of ruined it for the buyer. That's Kamehameha Schools, right? Yeah. Up on the ridge there, you see those kind of green roofs? That's like a landmark here in town. It's Kamehameha Schools. It's a, a private school where you have to be of Hawaiian blood, Hawaiian descent. There's been some lawsuits, but I don't know if you still have to, but that's whatever you used to have to. I'm not sure what the, how you navigate that now, but for the most part, it's all kids with some Hawaiian blood and uh, it was put in place. Um, did Queen Lily Okalani do it? And then it was, went through was, Bishop Estate? I was listening to you because I'm like, I don't really know. Well, that's Mahe. One of, our, one of our agents on our team from our North Shore video, she went to Kamehameha. Hello? Kenji and I were just shooting. This conversation might be on YouTube, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> we were looking at Kamehameha schools and I started to talk about how it came to be and then I was like, wait, I might be messing this up. Was it Lily Wokalani who... No. No? See? Si. Bernice Pauahi Bishop. Yeah, Bernice Pauahi Bishop. Bishop is her married name. She is a direct descendant of, you know, Kamehameha Paia, which is why it's called Kamehameha Schools. They actually wanted her to uh, take the throne, but she didn't want to. She felt like she could serve her better, her people better in a different way. And her thing, she couldn't have kids, right? So her thing was, how can she take care of and nurture as many Hawaiian children as she oh, could? And that's yeah. kind of her, like, that was her baby. Okay. Yeah, I've, I have heard this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification, Mahi. Yeah, don't go on YouTube saying Lili Okalani founded Kamehameha. <laughs> yeah, don't embarrass me on YouTube, okay? No, you're, I'm embarrassing me. You're the one. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Thank you. Okay, okay bye. Mahalos. Bye. I went to talk to this person about selling their home, and it was a really unique area. I was looking at this house, and the guy was like, if you go through those woods, there's a ho another house up there. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, you have to like hike up to the house. And I was like, is it even permitted? Like, and I think it's actually this guy who used to do construction and he had a permit for a shed on this land and then took the electrical and the plumbing and turned it into this whole big house. And you literally, like you have to hike to get to it. And uh, a few agents and investors I know have tried to go to the house. They get kind of scared and freaked out and decide and they turn around and decide not to go. So I wanted to show you guys that area. I've heard that that Mexican place back there is the best, one of the best places. You see that place, Alejandro's? I saw it, I never heard of it. Before. Is it because it's off the beaten path and hole in the wallish, or is it really one of the best? No sidewalks here. No sidewalks, that's a good observation. Kalihi Valley is just an interesting place. I mean, it's, imagine if this were a clean slate, no houses here. You know, I'm not saying that if it were a clean slate, we should develop. Maybe we should just keep it beautiful and make a, a park, a national park out of it or something, you know. However, for the purposes of this conversation, let's say there were no homes here and you were the builder and you could master plan this valley. You could turn this into like a Hawaii Kai, like this is 
it's, it's gorgeous. Like the land, the real estate is amazing, right? Kind of looks like Manoa Valley. Manoa Valley, right. Like, Kalihi's an area of mixed commercial and residential. And you go to any place in the country, you go to Oakland, California, where I used to live in Alameda and Oakland, or you go to LA, or you go to, you know, I'm sure New York. I don't know New York like that, but <clears throat> Chicago. If you go to mixed industry, commercial use, so you have a, uh, you know, a food processing plant and a roofing company and a oil refinery neck, and then you also have houses right there, it usually creates a slightly different culture or vibe and demographic than other places. That's what Kalihi is. When we go down into the flat part of the island, go down the hill, down the mountain, you'll see what I'm saying in terms of it's, it's industry, it's commercial, and then it's residential. And so I don't know how the development and how, how it went over time, but I feel like as it you know, developed into the mountains, you know, develop differently than Manoa or the valleys in Hawaii Kai. It's greener than Hawaii Kai. It's way greener than Hawaii Kai. You get, Hawaii Kai is dry, actually. It's, it's, it's on the drier side. This isn't where I wanted to go with that mystery house. Oh, actually, yeah, in the woods, it's somewhere in there, there's a house. Anyways, this isn't the video about finding Derek's one spooky house, but I figured it would be a good exercise to get us around the valley and kind of see what it's all about. Uh, we just saw the, the view of, of Mapunapuna, which is a pure, there's no residential in Mapunapuna. It's the industrial area fronting the airport or Mauka of the airport. And so we could see Mapunapuna, we could see Keehi Lagoon, the airport, obviously. You're looking over towards Pearl Harbor Hickam. And yeah, kind of a unique view. A lot of the views on the island, they, they showcase views facing Diamond Head. So facing facing east and it's kind of facing kind of southwest it's, it's a it's a different thing you never been here huh? i've never been here. <laughs> in the cuts up <laughs> this street up noy street we were looking into potentially helping these people sell those two homes there's still a lockbox maybe they're still trying to sell it off market but i'm not even oh, that's kind of mm -hmm. sketchy yeah i've had a recurring dream over time over my life, I don't know. But I've had a recurring dream of going up a hill that's too steep and then falling back. This is not that, but it definitely feels sketchy. I have, it's, it's a fear of mine. Let's go. So up this street, there are a couple homes, but if you, oh, dogs coming after us. If you hike like another eighth of a mile, like you have to hike deep into this area. I gotta focus, dude, I can't. <laughs> oh, this is sketchy. I'm afraid to take this turn. Hold on. We should have fucking come up here. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, I felt my tire catch. It felt like my tire was floating. So I don't recommend doing this kind of shit in the Odyssey. Bro, I'm sweating. <laughs> was that sketchy from where you were sitting? You were sketching me out, bro. Like... So when I think about Kalihi Valley, I think about this street. We survived. There's dogs barking everywhere. Um, occasional chicken house on a probably unpermitted who knows extremely steep driveway out in the woods somewhere if a dog starts chasing me and i put the camera down don't mind me you can see the valley over there so earlier it was shady and rainy and everything coming over the mountains um, there's real wind, a lot of wind funneling through that Kalihi Valley is a unique place. It's not like looking at or selling real estate anywhere else on the island, really. Let's just look at some of the house types here. You have homes like this where there's partial uh, concrete or CMU and then wood. Uh, what may have happened there is that there was uh, a, a, a wooden home, wooden built home, and then they lifted it. They raised the home and built the first floor afterwards and made that out of concrete. Uh, that's a somewhat common thing. Here's another uh, feature that I think will be common to find in Kalihi, Waipahu, a lot that's concreted all around with these sort of features like this, the iron gate, concrete everywhere and then a bunch of pots and plants. Hey, you probably never broke it down with this nuance, but think about this. 
You have a house. It has this, like these post things. An iron gate. Concrete all around, two story. Where are the two communities you're gonna see that? Maybe even old Ever Beach too though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Another thing in a community like this, you see all kinds of paint colors, right? So you can see a green and yellow house, a rainbow house, a tie-dye house. And as Kenji pointed out, there's no sidewalks. How's it? No, no sidewalks anywhere. So the, the homes start right at the road. There should be a five foot setback, but I don't think encroachments really matter. The city would have, have a lot of work to do if they wanted to go through all this community and enforce stuff such as encroachments and five foot setbacks and stuff like that. Is Helena's Kalihi? Yeah, where we eat Helena's today. I wonder if the male lady will talk to us. How's it? Do you know Philip Santos? No. He does Kalihi oh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Philip? Yeah, where is he now? He's my friend from high school. No, he used to be. Oh, I think he's the Kapalama. So yeah, different yeah. part of Kalihi there. Yeah, yeah. The other side of this mountain. We're doing, we're doing a video about Kalihi, just showing people all around Kalihi. You live around here? I li yeah, I live on my right on the next street. I mean, right around, off oh. of Kalihi Street. What school you went to then? I went to Campbell. Oh, what year you guys graduated? Oh, same year with O2. Oh, yeah, yeah, with Philip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know he did kids. Yeah, I never know he had kids. Tell him I said hi. Okay, I will. You ever heard of that house that's up on the hill, up there? You get two houses up there. There's two? Oh, so that's actual, actually permitted houses. I guess, but I think the guy tried selling at one point. Yeah. That's how I come up there. So I have to stop at one certain point and I walk him to his mailbox. You walk up there? Yeah. Where there's two, two, three houses at the top of the driveway. Yeah, 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 yeah. The house on this side at the end, she get one elevator. Elevator in the house? Yeah, she get elevator. But she said it's only for, um, to bring groceries up. So when you open her garage, you can see the elevator. It's this long thing. You can tell that's an elevator. Interesting houses up here, yeah? Yeah, very, very. Yeah, very. yeah. For if someone's coming from the mainland, they're not going to understand Kalihi Valley. Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. Kalihi, right? Oh, so, so that's what you're just trying to do. A lot of time, real estate agents, everything's perfect. Oh, it's a perfect... Oh, room. I know what you mean. So yeah, we're yeah. super honest about everything. Oh, and that's um, good. Then just be fair. Local's okay. perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, local's, local's oh, okay, perspective. Thank yeah. you. Right I'll on, check them out tonight. Thank you. Good luck to you. Yeah, so we just talked to the postal lady and she lives a few streets over. Super sweet lady, you know, tons of aloha, local auntie. So we're actually gonna, I was just telling Kench to hit the, the ridge of these homes. Way up on the hill over there, I see this red, kind of really nice looking home with a chimney. And then there's these two barn type houses over there. You know, you have some neighborhoods and some places in America and towns where everything's on a grid. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a waffle in terms of the streets. You have some places where it makes no sense. Because of the mountainous terrain and the density in this valley, it is chaos. Trying, like you, there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason to which direction you're going. You could be looking at a house and not be able to get there because of the, the way the roads are. You really need Google Maps or to just have the local knowledge to navigate this valley. You know what? I'm ready to get out of it and go get some food. So we're at the stoplight right now. If you look in the GoPro footage, you can start to see CAM4 housing, government assisted housing. So that's one of the, you know, the subsidized housing areas. Yeah, so my friend used to live right on this street. There's a different feeling on this side of Kalihi Valley I don't even know if they still, would would locals still call this Kalihi Valley? Or they call it like, come here, man. yeah, Kalihi Valley District Park. I don't know, in my mind, this is still Kalihi Valley, but it has a, a different feeling than across the street. Look, there's, there's sidewalks with trees and different vibe. We are entering Kalihi, Kalihi Kalihi, not Kalihi Valley. Is this Farrington High School? Huh? Yeah. The Farrington Governors. Farrington High School is, the high school zone for most of Kalihi. Micronesia Mart and Pro Club Outlet. Looks like maybe they sell work clothes, like Dickies and Carhartts and stuff like that. Golden Coin, they, they call it bake shop and restaurant. So it's like a, a bakery. I think H Mart is a Korean supermarket. There's, cause there's the one in Kaka'ako. Yeah, that one's great. There's a Zippies. Can't do a neighborhood vlog without a Zippies. Filipino, Asian, Micronesian groceries, fresh vegetables, frozen meat, Tagalog, English, and Korean movies for rent. They're still renting movies. The, blockbuster. This little blockbuster in Kalihi. Happy Snack Shop, Rudy's Cafe, 
Nanais, Degas. So right now we, we just took a left on Gulik. There's apartments. So you can see this fourplex here. There's a fourplex over there or maybe an eightplex. And then there's Honolulu Fish Company and Hawaiian Snow and a number of other warehouses and industrial type. You, you wouldn't think there'd be homes here, but you can kind of see the, the mixed industrial commercial use with residential. When you have this kind of industry and commercial use mixed with housing, it always makes for a different culture and, and, and maybe even demographic. So I'll leave that there, right at the edge of the cliff. Oh, this is the front of Farrington. You know, I've actually only ever seen Farrington from the back. Highway side. From the highway side. I've never seen what the front looks like. My boxing coach, uh, when I was younger, I used to box. And he was a famous, one of the more, you know, better Hawaiian boxers that there ever was. Uh, he fought professionally. He and his brothers went to Farrington. There's like four of them, four or five of them. And there's this story of how four of them fought off like 20, 30, 40 guys and, you know, back to back. So I asked my coach about it and he would, yeah, 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 yeah. We're like real modest, you know. Like, yeah, that 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 happened. I was like, really? It was like twenty. He's like, yeah, there's a lot of guys. Just me and my brothers back to back, but we all boxed. The reason why that's relevant is there's a boxing gym here called Kalakaua. Kalakaua Boxing Gym is probably the number one uh, boxing gym on the island. Okay, so let's see. Right after this is Helena. It's whole full already. This restaurant Helena's is a. Uh, they're on the Food Network, I think with Guy Fieri and all this stuff. So I hate to, I'm kind of almost shamed to admit it, but neither of us, neither of us have eaten okay. here. We're highway end people, but we, we shall see because a lot of people say this is the best Hawaiian food. What did the, I, I wanted to explain why you might hear me speak a little differently in different parts of, um, in different videos. And so earlier we were talking to the, the postal lady you can tell like my my accent changed right the pigeon came on oh auntie oh for real man. so i was born in florida came to hawaii when i was nine or ten and visited a couple summers and then i stayed when i was 12. you know it was my identity i was like oh i'm, I'm hawaiian and you know, my dad's from here and you can hear it in my voice now but i also you know i was born on the mainland i i joined the coast guard at age 22 and left for a decade and came back and so a lot of times, I don't think you hear a ton of the pigeon in my voice, but maybe, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know, is it like, Derek, you always sound like you're local. Uh, I feel like a lot of times the pigeon isn't in there, but maybe it's really subdued. But then if I, you know, speak to someone who speaks like that, it just, it turns on, you know, and it's not an act or a front, but having, you know, spent a third of my life in Florida, a third of my life in Hawaii, uh, almost, almost a third in California, it's, it just happens. Well, what's your tip then for people when they, they, they encounter that? Like, oh, this person is turning up the pigeon. I think, you, you know, you can tell. You can tell if it's authentic. Like, so if, someone, if someone's forcing pigeon, you know, like if I'm trying to force a Southern accent or a New York accent, I'm either really skilled or it's just probably never going to sound right. You don't need to try. And, and sometimes I get teased from people that speak better English. Like, I have really thick pigeon. But then sometimes I get, you know, sort of comments from people uh, that speak pidgin and say like, I, I speak really like whitewashed or, you know, really plain English. So it, who cares? Just do you, all of the characters behind your actions and your energy. Speak however you speak, but I'll let you know how this food is. Well, this is a, this is a thing in Hawaii. Onion, they don't, I don't know if they do this anywhere else. You take the onion, you like press it against the salt. You like press it, onion with salt. You're probably supposed to do it on this side because it's more wet. And then you like, and it goes, it matches, it's weird, but it matches this food. Took a couple of bites. Um, pretty good, the luau, the luau is, better than highway in i think okay guys we had helena's and it was it was okay it was good not maybe a little too hyped up for me this is bishop museum this is uh so for one mahe corrected me on the origins of kamehameha schools and it's, it was bernice pawahi bishop 
to the Bishop Estate and whatever. But uh, that's where you go for field trips when you're in, you know, when you're a kid. You go to school there and learn about Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian history and stuff. I didn't, I didn't know there was a Ford dealership here, but when you point out, yeah, the place with the gorilla, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, now I know what you're talking about. So you can kind of see like how close we are to downtown Honolulu. So when you start to see those buildings, that's downtown. So there's Chinatown, which is the actual name of it. Downtown Honolulu are the start of like, what I would say town. You have Kalihi and then like town starts. What we're doing right now is we're heading towards the ocean. It's just a bunch of industrial stuff. Growing up, I wouldn't call this Kalihi. I would just say like Nimitz. So usually you're referencing Nimitz, right? Nimitz is the main highway that goes from the airport all the way into town, into Honolulu. And at a certain point, it becomes Alamoana Boulevard. This is Dillingham here. You know what? Bob's is a Kalihi landmark, right? It but is. But because it's so wide open here and it's brown and yellow, I guess. I don't know. This is a busy intersection. It's a corner lot too. Corner lot. Bob's, Bob's is a Kalihi landmark. This mural here is a big Kalihi landmark as well. That's about the size I usually surf. I don't go out unless it's that big. <laughs> Since I've done some house flipping and help clients renovate and work with investors and stuff, um, I've come to find out that there are a lot of the cabinet and countertop stores are here in this area. Uh, there's probably at least 10 within 10 blocks of here. Places to sell cabinets, counters, sinks. So mostly imported from China. I was honking the horn because those people or raising awareness for this missing girl here on the island. There's this girl named Ariel uh, from Waimanalo who went missing. You, you heard about that? Yeah, there's a search party and everything. We've said it in other videos, and I'll say it again. In Hawaii, we have a certain care and love and nurturing for our keiki, for our children. People anywhere should, could, should, would protest for a young, person who's missing who can't speak for themselves who can't fight for themselves it might be elevated here or at least there's a different feel to it there's a different brand to how people will treat other children like they're their own you know that's why we moved home there's a little bit more of Kalihi this way we can see these are the ports you know where all the container ships come in and whatnot we're turning on to Nimitz Nimitz is seemingly purely commercial and industrial but again, as I talk about Kalihi, there's apartment buildings right here on this highway next to, you know, other stuff. I always wonder what's in these buildings. You know, you pass, you pass Nimitz. That's, oh, this looks like an actual residence. You'll see on the GoPro, there's shoes hanging from the power lines. And I always think of the movie Friday and uh, what it is that they were trying to portray with that. So, and this is where I come to buy my dad noodles. So these people make the noodles for zippies and for a ton of restaurants on the island. And I'll come here and I'll either, I'll either, I'll either, either overnight it to my dad with dry ice or when I'm, on, when I'm going on the airplane to Tennessee, I'll take my dad like 50 or 100 noodles uh, from Sun Noodle here. There's always a puddle there, yeah? yeah. There's, yeah. there's always a puddle. It's like poorly uh, designed street. Wow, that's someone's house. We're turning by the prison. So there's two, yeah, on the island. There's O Triple C. What are the three C's? Oahu, Community, um, County, Correctional. Either way, this is the, the prison. There's another prison though, yeah? There's O Triple C. Halava. Halava. I was in jail once. Long story short, I'm on the way to Jiu Jitsu. I'm where it's cold in California. I'm wearing slippers because you change into barefoot, you know what I mean? So I'm not dressed for coldness. I get pulled over, uh, I don't know, stop sign or registration, I don't know. But apparently there was like a six-year-old parking ticket that I didn't pay. And so they handcuffed me. Over time, she saw that I was a normal, so she, a normal guy. So she let me use her cell phone to call my wife. Like, hey, I'm going to jail. And my wife was all freaked out and it, it was nothing. After a few hours, they let me go. I went, to the, I went to court and the judge was like, why are you here? And I was like, I think a parking ticket. She's like, 
can I give you the minimum and we just call it a day? I was like, sure, that sounds great to me. I felt like I was gonna write my book after that. <laughs> it was just like six hours in jail. I was like, oh, freedom is an amazing thing. Here's the rail being built. So <clears throat> this is around the area where they were having a really hard time actually completing the rail. You know what? I think we're good. That was another part of our Honolulu series. This was Kalihi, the lush valley to the industrial area, the mixed use housing in between, the, the prison, everything. You're only gonna see it here. So if you have Hawaii real estate goals, make sure to reach out to us. And uh, we'll link some other videos that you guys might like right after this.